Yo dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days, coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California, we're doing it again. It is my hope today to show you an exercise. It's, it's simple, secretly easy perhaps, but the object of today's lesson is to thin your paints such that when you glaze them thinly over a black and white grayscale, that the values will poke through and sort of create that delineation and that transition. If you can achieve this, you can glaze. And glazing is probably one of the most important paintbrush techniques in the miniature painting game. Now look, it's been a while since we talked like this face to face. So let me just promote business swag shop. I'm putting up new designs on the monthly, sometimes on the weekly. Take a look at the hoodies, the shirts, the mugs, and more. Anyway, let's do this thing. Glazing 101 guys. What I did here was I prepped this model, sprayed it black and white, did some gray, some transitions, really basic top down highlighting. I did a quick dry brush and then I washed it. After it dried, I varnished it and today we're gonna lay down some colors. I'm just grabbing some of my favorite pro krills, Creature Caster, I'm gonna lay down some red. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. How thin are you thinning your paints? A lot of people are always, blown away by how thin I go when they see it in person. So I'm trying to capture that here today for you on the video. I am going so thin. Now, I don't always go this thin, but you gotta be prepared to go this thin. Now, a lot of glazing and getting your paint thin is adding a lot of water. This is gonna separate the pigment from the medium, but now sometimes you gotta get the water out of there. The water is what gave you that ability, but sometimes you don't want it that watery. You just want that broken down pigment. And that's what I'm laying down right here. Now this is a little on the watery side, but that's fine. Cause we're sweeping in, staying active, just like with a wash. If I'm seeing any pooling, I'm gonna remove it. But unlike a wash, I want this to remain straight up transparent. Usually the objective or the intent is what separates a technique from one another, even though they're very similar. Washing and glazing are similar in the way I like to approach them. Very light brush pressure, stay active and stay engaged, but the intent is everything. I intend to remain transparent with this application. That makes it a glaze. So we're gonna just move through, staying as thin as we can, keeping that brush pressure light, keeping our paint thin, broken down, but not just a straight puddle of water, see? There is some pulling there, but we're able to manipulate it. We have enough work time that we can pull it out of the recesses, do what we want to do. Now, when you get more advanced in glazing, you're going to be getting used to removing more and more water from the brush and just going with super thin pigment, but not necessarily super watered pigment. That's for a later video. This is a simple exercise. You can see as we lay down these reds, all that black and white dry brushing and grayscale we did is absolutely showing through. You're seeing some darker red, you're seeing some brighter red, even here on this big sweeping cape, you're seeing it. Now, obviously, this isn't a super vibrant red. This is a very desaturated red. Now, this hue, this very bold pyro red, is becoming desaturated because we're allowing it to interact with black and white, which is going to give it its value. Now, the way to breathe some life back into it re-up the hue, the saturation, is do it again. Always let the thin-ass glaze dry fully, then reapply. If you do this very methodically and you take your time, you will add another micro-thin, tiny sheet of red that will up the intensity. If you go too fast or all at once, you're just painting. You're just laying down a base coat. But by doing this slowly and incrementally, we get to decide in real time just how vibrant our red is. Now, obviously, like I said, this is just an exercise. If I wanted to, I could be using browns, I could be using oranges, I could do anything. I'm gonna keep with this model and do that over the next couple of weeks, but let's just start with the beginner stuff. What I'm doing now is finding her skin. I just grabbed my favorite tan flesh, same thing, I thinned it down. We're gonna do a few coats. You're gonna begin to realize instantly that every color Every hue, every pigment has its own struggles when glazing. Now this is a much brighter color. 
very, very high value. So I'm gonna go real thin and I'm gonna take my time. Now with skin, I don't necessarily like that desaturated look. I need a little bit more vibrancy. So it might take a few passes. We might have to do a little bit more here. But if you just take your time and work through the methods, it kind of dries almost as fast as you can put it down. As we go up and down the leg, what we laid down at the beginning is already dry. So we're already ready for our second pass. But you can see it's very desaturated. Just stick with it. Patience is the glazing game. Once you figure out how to make your paints do this and you're comfortable with it, you can do anything. This is one of those tricks that's basically really hard to do until you figure out that last missing step and then you're like, yeah, damn it, this is easy. So we're just gonna work the face, give it the dry time it requires, move on, do it again. So now you're gonna see completely different results. Now that we're doing the second glaze, right over that first one, you're gonna notice the skin tone is gonna start snapping. It moves fast with these tones. But it looks a lot more vibrant when you lay it down because it's wet. Things that are wet look more vibrant. When they dry, they're gonna mute themselves down a little bit. And you'll see as we go. But we're trying to go as thin as we can possibly get away with. And I will emphasize light brush pressure over and over again. You don't want to peel anything up. You don't want orange peeling to occur. You don't want to reactivate a previous layer. You just always want to be on your game there. So we're doing our feet, everything between those wraps. We're going to do the, the, the thigh again, and we're going to just keep doing it. But I don't want to ever invalidate the values that we created with the black and white grayscale. So the second I feel like, it, you know, I'm in danger of that, that's the last coat. Do it her face as well. Very natural. We're going to just grab some jade really basic we're gonna do all of her like wraps and robes and shit like that with this fun little jade color keeping it real thin be cognizant of any pulling manipulate it dry the paintbrush off pull it away if you see that happening just stay active if you stay present and active in this process you will get good results this you know um, results may vary though like if you're having trouble getting your paint this thin and laying it down without just washing everything out just just you know reset try it again don't try to make this model. I'm not trying to paint this model. Like also don't get that twisted. This, I don't care about this. Like this is simply an exercise. I'm going to keep working the exercise on her without the intent of her actually being a finished piece. That's how you need to approach it. Every little section of the model is another way to practice. We're just trying to control our paints, lay them down, have the value show through. When you can get that going, you're ready. We're going to do some brown on her pouches. The brown's gonna snap pretty fast, much darker, has an easier time in a lot of these situations, not remaining chalky or desaturated. Do it like her knife and her ritual dagger or whatever. We're not trying to pick every little detail out with this. I wouldn't even do all this. I probably would have airbrushed half of this, right? And then I would have just started glazing in my other colors. But that's why this is an exercise. This is a lesson plan, you know? Try this. If you're struggling, it's not for everyone, but being able to get your paints this thin will help you. We're going to just grab an ochre. We're going to glaze it over her hair. So she's going to start becoming a blonde, not pure yellow, just like an ochre, like a golden brown, essentially. Just work it in there. Let it dry. Do a couple passes. Get the hue to pop. But remember, every coat you lay down brings you closer to true opacity. And full opacity is not what we're looking for in this exercise. We're trying to stay as transparent, translucent as possible. Here's a little bit of a bright green color, random. We're just going to throw it on this little fireball. Let it all kind of just interact with all the blacks and the whites, the dry brushing and the washes we did. And you just see it looks that fast. Real simple. So I'm pretty happy so far with this. But I'm going to do something kind of fun here. I'm going to take some of the red. I'm going to try to do it one more time. Try to up the opacity on her red uh, robes or wizard sleeves and whatnot. Just try to show you what I mean. Every pass you lay down gets closer to opacity, but also ups the hue, ups the saturation. You see that, how instantly that's a little bit more intense. It's up to you to decide when it's been enough. Since I have this red and the brown and the tan flesh on my palette, what I did was I mixed them all together into another glaze, and I'm gonna reintroduce that into the flesh. So this is the beginning. I'm not gonna expand on this a whole lot, but this is the beginning of getting into fully glazing and realizing what you can do with this 
I'm creating some shadows, introducing a new hue entirely, something that's gonna create a little bit uh, more dimension, take her off of a little bit of a monochromatic uh, skin tone. And you can do this literally with any color back and forth. It's not just going dark to light or going light to dark. At any moment, you can interact with any part of the paint job with a glaze. Like I said, I'm not gonna go into it too detailed right here. We do have other videos on it, but I do plan on expanding this series on glazing because it has been coming up a lot on Twitch during our live show and in my private classes via Patreon. I have lots of students. We do private one-on-one -on -one classes. And this is something that is get, getting brought up a lot. But look, guys, thanks for checking out this content. In the meantime, play on, players. If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.